Hello, everybody. My name is Matt, and I'm at Launch Bad Recovery Center. I'm 50 years old, been struggling with addiction since I was 17, and a strong cocaine addiction, and a crack addiction, and uh, in and out of recovery. I've never had more than 18 months clean and sober. Had a wife, car, two cars in the garage, house. Sold real estate with my father in the States for 15 years. Part-time, worked out of a construction union full-time. So I was somewhat successful, but always played with the drugs and always lost things. And always played with the alcohol first and lost things. So at uh, 47 years old, I started getting um, incarcerated every few months. Um, I, I picked up the crystal meth. And I was in jail. For, I have 34 convictions since 2000. Eight, 17, yeah, 17. 34 <laughs> convictions. That's, you know. So I got to a point in my life where I just totally gave up. Um, the woman I married passed away of cancer seven years ago, this Christmas Day. Her name is Mary, God rest her soul. And my two children, Ryan and Joey, um, are, are okay today. But my, my relationship with my family was, you know, it wasn't there. I was despondent um, the past few years, especially. Um, nobody could get a hold of me. Nobody knew where I was. I was in about uh, five to six different jails in Ontario, um, Niagara, Toronto, London, Sarnia, Windsor, Maplehurst, Milton, um, Penetang. Um, it got to a point where I just gave up on life. Uh, and that drug, that evil drug that's out there now, did something to me and it just it made me give up and I went through a psychosis and um, a mania, a mania with the drug. And uh, this time in jail, uh, I got out October 21st. Um, I wasn't trying to change. I wasn't. I just wanted to beat the charges and get out of there. And what happened was there was a guy in a cell that they put me in in the kitchen range um, that had a book sitting on the couch. And he said, uh, I said, can I read that? And it said, reunited. And I knew who the Lord was. I was baptized as a born-again Christian and uh, knew quite a bit about the Bible. And uh, I was picking and playing with the book in my bunk. And his name is Jake. And uh, um, he said, hey, just read it. Take, it. take it easy. Just go a day at a time with it. Well, after about a month, three, three weeks to a month of working with this guy, being in the same cell, I was preaching to him. It, it, became, uh, it became a relationship, uh, a bond, right? I said, thank you, man. God really used you. I forgot how much God loves me and forgives me. And, and he can he can take my twisted mind and my all my sins and and I just have to walk and I started reading the Psalms again. I started praying the Psalms over my children and uh, you know the jail cells opened again and I was out. I got out and I only uh, did a small portion of what I was supposed to get, uh, but for the grace of God. And then I got out and I went to Launchpad Recovery immediately. I got to Launchpad and uh, I felt at home. I felt at home. I, I knew right away that this was Christ-centered. I needed more Jesus, and I was on fire for Christ when I got there. As a matter of fact, John Button was saying, hey, I don't run this place. You don't run this place. I do. Like, I was just telling about, I was just so on fire for Christ, so happy that Windsor had a place that I could go and, 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 and get into Christ-centered recovery. And uh, it's, I, I'm five months clean now. Yeah, yeah, thank you very, very much. Yeah, only by the grace of God. I, I, I couldn't properly speak in jail when I first got put in jail from the, uh, the tweak the meth did to my brain. And uh, I suffered from severe paranoia, like people were trying to kill me. I was living in cars and new car lots, used car lots, and uh, stealing, cheating, lying every day. Um, you know, I, I was a ward on society bomb, you know what I mean? I was really, really bad. Um, I did things I never thought I would do, stole from innocent people. And uh, so, the police came and arrested me at probation after I was at launch pad. And they said, you got 23 more convictions. I mean, charges coming on you. Some of them are even worse than your other ones. So at this point, I'm already full of the Lord and I'm reading my Bible and, every, and my Jesus calling every morning. And it, it, it matches. It's, it matches with what's going on in my life. And uh, this was about, I don't know, about two months ago, two and a half months ago. And uh, so they brought me downtown to the, to the station and they, they said, you're going away, buddy. We got more stuff on you still. They, we know you did a lot of things, man. We know this, that, that, and this. They said, you know, so I'm looking at pen, penitentiary time. I've never been to the penitentiary. Well, yeah, I was in a penitentiary in the States for immigration reasons, but I've never been to a penitentiary 
here in Canada. So I knew this was it, you know, I might as well just plead guilty and go or whatever and uh, and just deal with it, right? Because I have Jesus in my life, he'll protect me, right? They let me out of jail that day. They said, uh, you know, you can be out on your own recognizance, recognizance. And uh, that was a miracle. Like, come on, that doesn't happen to me. I go right to jail. And they had stuff on me that was so, um, I would fly, I'm a flight risk. I'm, I'm a flight risk. I'm on four probation orders, Niagara, Toronto, Toronto, uh, London, and Windsor. Well, Windsor now, no more London. So I'm a flight risk. I'm not, I'm not trustworthy. I'm not, uh, I'm not the type of guy that says go to court or probation. I didn't go to probation. I do today though. And, uh, my lawyer finally gets to a point where she's talking to the crown and wants to introduce me to the crown. The crown saying, we want to give you a drug court. We don't want to send you back to jail. We want to give, get you the help you need. You've been at launch pad. You got like 200 meet, uh, meetings you go to on your list, sign in sheets here. And, uh, that's a miracle. That's a miracle. And what's happened to my heart is only like Jesus goes for the lost sheep, right? The one that's lost. You know what I mean? I was already his. I was already sealed. I was already sealed, but I wasn't living the way. Like in that jail cell, what happened was Jacob's book, Reunited, a pastor out of Hamilton wrote it. It's a really good book. Um, it talks about grace, grace, it's hyper, hyper grace and all these things, right? And uh, it just really spoke to me. And I started, like I said, doing that. Anyway, so I'm only here because I'm 50 years old. I, I, I've been at recovery my whole life. And I'm only here because of God's hyper grace. Because he went for the one lost sheep. And I can articulate my words today. I'm not paranoid. I'm on the proper medication, which is mild. Okay. I've seen a psychiatrist today all through Launchpad. All through Launchpad. I never want to leave that area. I go downtown to do my stuff or my bidding or whatever I got to do. And uh, I rush back there because that's where I feel my home is. It became a home. John Button has been nothing but a leader to me, a mentor a person that uh, I could follow, you know, we all have our issues, okay? But with Jesus, when you, when you, when you got Jesus in the center of everything, um, things seem to work out perfectly. You know what I'm saying? He knows what's going on. So I just want to say thank you, and uh, I'm on the road to recovery. I'm staying here. Launchpad is a great place, and uh, I, would, I wouldn't have made it anywhere else, I don't think. So I'm very grateful to the Lord for what he's done for me. And I give him all glory, all honor, and all praise. It was only through my weaknesses that he made me strong. And it's, it, this is him speaking. This isn't me. This is the Lord speaking through me. It's only because of him being strong through my weaknesses that he has made me stand here today and tell you my testimony. And I give him all glory and honor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.